All right, so the next jazz improv trick that I want to leave you with is the idea of color tones. Again, we're going to use a major 2-5-1 chord progression to discuss what color tones you're going to use. For most of this course, we're going to be covering major 2-5-1s. Minor 2-5-1s tend to get a little more complex, but I am going to touch upon them in some ways. But our meat and potatoes for this course is the minor 7th chord, the dominant 7th chord, and the major 7th chord. We will work a little bit on types of 2s and 5s that do exist in minor keys, but let's stay focused on the meat and potatoes for now. So, the first chord we're going to work with is, again, C major 7. And I remember in my jazz workshop at York University, um, a great guitarist and our workshop leader, Lorne Lofsky, uh, he told me to stop playing such bluesy material, and he was totally right. That was my background, was really focused on blues. And so he told me to just try using color tones. And for me, this was a bit of an aha moment. So let's talk about these. What are color tones? Well, we have our basic chord, C major, and as we add our seventh, we're already starting to add some more color over top of the chord. Maybe we also add a ninth. Maybe we also add an 11 and a 13. But over a major chord, this 11, it's kind of an avoid note. It doesn't sound so great because it's clashing with our E by a semitone. So we're going to actually raise that up to an F sharp. Now, yes, the F sharp is clashing with G by a semitone, but G is not a crucial note in this chord. We could just play a more shell-based voicing, C, E, B, and now our F sharp really opens up that sort of Lydian sound. So I'll still keep the G in the left hand to keep the voicing very simple. I just wanted to kind of explain why I feel the F sharp works even though it's clashing with G by a sort of disguised semitone, whereas the F is a little bit more of an avoid note. This fourth, for example, or 11th, we will use quite a bit on a minor chord, but over dominant and over major, you tend to want to try to avoid it. So what do we end up getting? We get a minor seventh chord down one semitone from the root. So over a C major seven, I'm playing B minor seven. And some things that you can try with this B minor 7 would be to zigzag through the chord. Get a really cool sound. Um, you could also try dyads. So root and fifth of the chord, third and seventh, fifth and root, seventh and third, alternating. So that can sound really awesome as well. Of course, you could just lineate it. So just moving up through the different notes on the way up. Oh. And then maybe resolving somewhere a little bit fun outside of that. You might notice if you're really keen that the trick that I gave you for the pentatonic tricks over a major chord is not that different from what I'm showing you right now. So if we take D major pentatonic, it only has one note that's different from our B minor seven chord that we just had. It's the E, which happens to be the third of the chord that we're playing. So we're playing B minor seven with an additional E. And in this case, the B isn't on the bottom, it's at the top. So there's our D major pentatonic. You get rid of the E and you just have an inversion of B minor seven. So the two ideas are very related. If you're used to using traditional scales, then you have a lot more opportunity for sort of smaller intervals within your improv. Pentatonic is gonna open up some more skips here and there. Um, so when we're going, and again, I'm talking in the key of D at this point, but one, two, three, skip to the five, six, skip to the one. So we skip some notes along the way. And then when you're using color tones, it's like primarily skips, sometimes large leaps as well too. So depending on how leapy and colorful you want your improv to be, if you want it very leapy, use the color tones. If you want it pretty leapy, use the pentatonic scales. And if you want to kind of keep it tight knit, more semitones and tones, then focus on more traditional modes like Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, those sort of modes. So that covers the color tones for the major seventh. Next, let's move over to the minor seventh chord. If I was to play through D minor and add color tones, we would end up getting a flat seven, a nine, an 11 or four and a 13 or six. So what we end up getting is a major seventh chord down one tone from the root. So if I'm playing D minor seven in my left hand, I'm gonna be improvising over the notes from C major seven in the right hand. Again, try the same tricks. You can try alternating a zigzag pattern 
can sound pretty cool. Um, you can try um, every other note of the chord in an ascending fashion. So C to G, E to B, G to C, B to E, or root, fifth, third, seventh. Fifth root, seventh, third. So you can try this blocked. You can also try it broken, ascending, descending. And again, you can try lineating this and then sort of finding your way out of the pattern by an accompanying note that might work well. So over, over a D minor seventh chord, maybe I want to resolve to an A. In this case, it's not available within this C major seventh chord, but we'll make it available. So I'm coming down through the notes of that chord, and at some point when I'm close to A, I'm resolving to the A. So that's what I would play over a minor seventh chord. You're thinking down one tone, playing a major seventh over the minor seventh in the left hand. And then lastly, again, the hardest one to cover is the dominant chord. So what makes the dominant chord tricky to improvise over in terms of color tones is that very often you're gonna get a dominant chord that has some sort of alteration. Maybe it's a flat nine or a sharp nine or a sharp 11 or a flat 13. The idea here is the safest options for us would be the flat seven as a color, probably the nine, but you might want to consider that you might need one of the neighboring nines, the flat nine or the sharp nine, but basically we'll go with the nine. The 11 is a little risky. I would focus probably more towards the sharp 11 and then the 13 as well too, which may be a flat 13. So these color tones are going to be absolutely extracted out of whatever chord you're playing over. A good basis place to kind of start is down a tone from the root playing a major seventh chord but watch out for that 11 it's generally an avoid note over a chord like that so you might want to consider sharpening the 11 or focusing on the major third which gives you a rootless voicing for anyone that knows rootless voicings so yeah for the major chord i feel very confident saying that down a semitone a minor seventh chord is going to give you some really great results for a minor seventh chord going down a tone and playing a major seventh is also going to give you great results but for the dominant chord you're really going to have to take it case by case see what are the alterations if any over that dominant chord and then do a little bit of research to see okay what color tones make the most sense i want a seven a nine an eleven and a thirteen which of those exist in the most complementary fashion to my chord so that's it for color tones. We're starting on the seventh. We're trying to find a type of seven, nine, 11, 13, alter them as needed. And what you're gonna get is just all of the, the color of that chord or the color of jazz over top. So you may wanna take this approach and pair it with some of the other tricks in this video just to kind of spice things up. So if I'm playing a two, five, one in C major for the two, maybe I'm just thinking Dorian for the five, Maybe I'm whole tone, and then over the C, then I'll try some of those color tones. So kind of use them um, in a mixed up fashion just to kind of spice up your improv a bit. And that's what I have to say about color tones. Let's move to the next trick.